So here's a simple example where we're going to try to put this definition of the definite integral to use, right? So we have this, uh, this definition of the definite integral in terms of signed area, total signed area, where we, we take the difference between the area that's above the x-axis and the area that's below the x-axis, right? So the particular function that we have here is this piecewise linear function, right? So we have just simply, I mean, we could work out what the equations are, right? This is just y equals x going from 0 to 1. And then we have this line here with negative slope. We could work that out if we wanted to, but we don't really need to. Uh, coming down from 1 all the way to 5, right, with an intercept at 3. Okay. Now, um, we can identify three areas in the picture, right, um, using kind of computations for triangles, 1 half base times height, right? So area one, in fact, we could have done the whole thing, right? This triangle has base three, height one. So, you know, if we're doing A1 plus A2, well, it's one half, three times one is three over two. But of course, that's the same thing as saying that this area is a half, that area is one. We add them together, we get three over two, right? Um, this third area, I mean, as an area, areas should be stated as a positive quantity, right? We're not talking sawing the area yet. Um, this area is 1, right? Base 2, height 1. 1 half base times height gives us 1, okay? So if we want to talk signed area, then we put this in terms of the integral, okay? So the integral from 0 to 3. Well, the integral from 0 to 3 is just the area of this big triangle here. Um, and as we just said, that's 3 over 2. Okay. Uh, the integral from 3 to 5, right? Well, this area here is 1, right? But we want signed area for the integral, right? So because this is below the x-axis, that comes out to minus 1. Okay. Now, um, if I want the integral from 0 to 5, going all the way from beginning to end, we want total signed area, right? So area above minus area below, meaning that we should do a1 plus a2, and then we should subtract a3, right? So that means we do 1 half plus 1 minus 1, and we're left with 1 half, okay? Uh, now, one thing you might notice here is that, we, and we've seen this kind of a couple times, right? Um, the... The total area of the big triangle is just the sum of the two areas of the smaller triangles. This is kind of an obvious statement about areas. Um, we could also kind of put that in terms of saying that, well, this is the integral from 0 to 1 of fx, and then this is the integral from 1 to 3 of fx dx, right? And if we add those two together, we get the total area from 0 to 3. Um, similarly, if we add these two together, the 3 over 2 added to minus 1, we get 1 half. We get the total area from 0 to 5, right? Um, so we'll find that this is kind of a, a general property, that if one integral begins where another one ended, if you add the two together, you're going to get the total going from the beginning of the first to the end of the second. Okay? Um, seems reasonable enough. Now, what about this one here? We can't quite get this from the graph, but we think about it for a second. Um, 5 times f of x. What would happen if we took this function and we multiplied by 5? Well, that would be a vertical stretch, right? So what would happen is that this would be stretched up by a factor of 5 until the peak of this triangle is up at y equals 5 rather than y equals 1, okay? So then we haven't changed the width of the triangle at all, right? The, the base is still the same, but now the height is 5 times as big, right? So then we'd be doing 1 half times a base of 3 times a height of 5. So we get 15 over 2, right? 1 half times 3 times 5 gives us uh, 15 over 2. And you might notice that that answer is five times as big as this answer, right? Um, and so you might guess that there's a property here saying that, you know, if you have the integral of five times a function, that's the same thing as doing five times the integral, okay? Now, this last one, integral from one to one. So you think about that for a second. So what, what does that even mean, integral from one to one? Um, well, we think in terms of area. 
And, and we say, okay, well, what's the area that we get um, if we begin and end at one? Well, if we begin and end at the same point, point um, there's no base, right? Our triangle has base zero. So it has area zero. So anytime you have an integral that begins and ends at the same point, if the two bounds are the same, the upper and lower limits of integration, if those are the same, answer is going to be zero. Okay? So we're going to take some of the ideas that uh, they came up in this example, and we're going to turn those into some general properties, and we'll, we'll give those next.